Tonight, new details about a medical emergency on a school bus this afternoon. We now know several students went to the hospital with elevated levels of carbon monoxide in their system. We first brought this to you as breaking news at 5 o'clock. We showed you that school bus in front of the Miller's Ferry Fire Department on Long Ferry Road in Salisbury. Channel 9's Jonathan Lowe is live at the school bus depot. And Jonathan, you spoke to a mother and grandfather of some students on that bus? Yeah, certainly some tense moments for those family members. Evan, that bus was brought here to the Rowan Salisbury uh, School District Bus Depot. It's actually right on the other side of this gate here. Uh, my photographer, Coleman Montgomery, giving you a closer look of it. Parked at the garage there, the doors open, the windows open, uh, a few of them at least, possibly to let that bus air out. Rest assured that McCann is going to take a good look at it. One student told me that they were on that bus for about 45 minutes today before it made that scheduled, but albeit emergency stop at that fire station. Carolyn Rio started getting concerned when her daughter's school bus didn't show up on time this afternoon. Then she got a call that any parent would dread. Pick up your kids at the fire department. We live like three houses down. My husband ran to the fire department. We were there tonight just as she was discharged from Rowan Novant Medical Center. It was her blood pressure that they couldn't get it to come down. It was really elevated. Her daughter was among 27 students on board bus 372 from Salisbury's Hanford Dole Elementary School when it made a regular and extremely convenient stop at the Miller's Ferry Fire Department. And I think when he pulled in to drop her, my, my granddaughter off and he checked his bus, and realized there was someone in the back of the bus that was sick. Assistant Chief Bobby Fox says after getting his granddaughter off the bus, the bus driver asked him to check on the student that was vomiting out of a window, but he found more than just one student in distress. One was actually laying in the floor. It was pretty much unconscious at that point, and then one more kind of in the seat slumped over, not really talking or moving. He says an EMT immediately checked their levels and found they had elevated amounts of carbon monoxide in their systems. And as they were assessing all of the children, we found four additional children with elevated CO levels. He says those four were not showing symptoms. So they were all from the same area of the bus, Where? which was in the rear of the bus. It's not yet clear from the school district what on the bus may have caused the children's elevated CO levels, but Rio says her daughter has been reporting something similar for at least the last two weeks. The kids have been mentioning that um, there were other children having uh, upset stomachs throwing up on the bus. I don't know if it's actually related. Now, Carolyn Rio says she's going to be thinking really hard over the weekend as she's going to be putting her daughter back on the bus on Monday. But I asked her daughter and she said she has no interest in doing that. In the meantime, I reached out to school district officials to ask them for the latest information on bus 372, including how old it is, when was the last time it was inspected. I was told my request would be forwarded to the transportation department here. When and if I learn some new information, I'll be sure to pass it on to you. Live tonight in Salisbury, Jonathan Lowe, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Call as a parent running to the fire department and then you find out your kid is sick. Well, interested to find out what actually caused this, Jonathan. I know you'll stay on top of it. Thank you.